when it comes to the diagnosis of this disease, what are some individual markers that are looked for in comparison to maybe another type of rheumatic disease? So in rheumatology, uh, it's uh, uncommon for us to have formal diagnostic criteria. Uh, and this speaks often to the, the, the protean uh, nature of our diseases, the, the heterogeneity, the very different ways in which they can often present. Uh, and to the skill of the rheumatologist, right, who is trained to recognize these complex diseases. And so while we don't have uh, formal diagnostic criteria for non-radiographic AXPA, there are classification criteria that can be a guide to diagnosis. Classification criteria are used primarily for clinical trials in order to identify a patient population appropriate to study but they do contain pearls that can also inform the diagnostic process. And so sometimes we look to the ASAS classification criteria that I alluded to earlier, published in 2009, and they do provide some helpful diagnostic guidance to the community. Uh, a patient can meet those criteria through either one of two means. Uh, either they can have imaging evidence of disease. Now for non-radiographic AXPA, those patients uh, by definition don't have a demonstrable radiographic progression or damage in their SI joints. So this is not x-ray evidence of disease, but more typically MRI evidence of disease that shows inflammation in those sacroiliac joints. If a patient has that imaging evidence uh, together with appropriate symptoms or clinical features of disease, then frequently uh, it's possible to make a diagnosis. Alternatively, even in the absence of imaging evidence, uh, patients can be classified as having non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis if they have a genetic marker called HLA-B27, which is accessible as a simple lab test, in conjunction with two or more of those clinical features of disease. And so these clinical features, I think, are well known to the rheumatology community, but some of them, in actuality, uh, affect other organ systems outside of the musculoskeletal system. So we think about things like ubiitis. Uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, plaque psoriasis of, of the skin. Uh, and these clinical manifestations uh, can cause a patient to present in care settings other than a rheumatology clinic, like an ophthalmologist or a dermatologist or a gastroenterologist. So although the U.S. rheumatology community, I think, is well-versed with those clinical manifestations and the diagnostic process that they inform, there still is, I think, a great opportunity to educate some of our colleagues in other specialties so that they have an equal awareness of, of non-radiographic AXPA and the way that it may present in terms of its clinical manifestations. 